Hey friends, Alvin here. It is chapter five of our book club, Youth Ministry Now and Not Yet. And so welcome back once again, Matt Wilkinson, as we lead into chapter five. Well, friends, here we are. This theme here we have, as we step in, is being relational is being redefined. Uh, we might know this more than ever. Right now, the world that we are navigating in uh, has pushed us into the realm of entering uh, the digital world. More time is being spent online right now, whether there's Zoom call, Google Meets, um, whatever it might be that you're finding your way online. Uh, students, uh, young, younger kids, uh, grandparents, everyone is finding their way online right now. Uh, but there's one thing for many of us, when we look at the idea of a Zoom thing, when we look at the idea of, of Discord, when we look at uh, TikTok, Facebook, when we look at uh, any kind of these online means of connecting with one another, is that they are communication tools. Uh, however, as you engage the next generation, there's one thing and an important shift to understand. When we look at what is it to be effective in ministry, we know that effective ministry has always been rooted in being effective in relationally connecting with students, re relationally connecting with youth. Um, but we have to realize that there is a shift that has happened, which is that social media uh, is not just a tool of communication, but it's a way of life. For many of us that will be uh, watching this and viewing this, and looking at this uh, chapter, uh, we, we know the world outside of social media. We know the world before there was social media. Uh, and so we adapt into the world of social media through the lens of it being a, use, a useful communication tool. You like it or you don't, uh, whatever our opinions are about it, we use it as a tool. That isn't the reality uh, for youth today. Uh, youth and young adults, this is a way of life. They don't know the world outside of it, but it's an identity shaper as well. Uh, it's a way of relating with one another. Uh, it's how you shape, how you see yourself, and you, how you want others to interact with you. Uh, they easily adapt their identity. Why is social media navigated so well for them, and why are they finding themselves online as not just a way to communicate, but as a way to discover and reveal themselves in the way that they live life? Is that this is a place where I can easily adapt my identity without having a huge cost. I can adapt the music that I like or not like by simply sh uh, sharing or unlike or changing elements of, of what I like and don't like. I can share my look. I can adapt visual, visually what I look like, what clothing I want to have without having to change my whole, whole wardrobe. Um, social media allows us to adapt and see how people respond to an identity that I would embrace. And then how they respond allows me to see, do I want to continue this identity or not? Is this part of how I see myself or how do I want people to relate with me? It's important that as we look at the digital world and most specifically social media uh, is that uh, there is the social media world or the digital world, and there is what we will call the physical world. Many people say, well, I just want to engage you in the real world. Uh, I, I think what you're saying is right on. We want to be relational in the real world. But the real world is not just the physical world. The real world is actually the digital or social world, social media world, plus the physical world combined together equals the real world. That's the real world that our young people are living in. And we have to interact in both those realms uh, to be effective in knowing uh, fully who they are and how it is to build relationships. One student I remember uh, along the journey had shared with me, he says, uh, do you want to get, do you want to know me? Obviously, as a youth pastor, I wouldn't say no. Uh, yes. Do you really want to know me? And we were texting at this time. Yes. What do you mean? They then shared, well, you need to enter my world. What they're saying was, you need to enter in to my digital space. You need to enter in to my social world, which is online. Let us relate there. I want to see how you're going to relate with me. You see, social media isn't good. It isn't bad. Social media isn't right. It isn't wrong. It just is. The presence is, is what do you do with it while you're there? And how do you uh, navigate in that world? How we relate and engage with them online gives them the window into how they'll be related to you, often face to face. It allows them a safe net, it allows them a space, it allows them to figure out, will I be ignored? Are you a person that actually is only programmatically interested in me? Or actually, are you in, interested in my life and what's happening? Will you know some of the smaller details in my life? You may only know those if you're actually following me in my world. And so we can look as though it's like, actually you would outside the world of social media, you actually ignore me. Unless in face-to-face, -face, you have to because of your 
job, but would you ignore me? Would you judge me? Um, or would you want to engage with me? Are you one that shows interest in my life? Are you someone that I can trust? And will you be an encourager? Will you be able to challenge me, but also believe in me? I'll start to figure that out by the way that you relate with me online. So they're redefining what it is. And this is how they relate as peers. They can figure out their peer uh, relationships of how do you navigate with my digital image? Is this going to be an area where you have the freedom to bully? And so I'm assuming then when we're face-to-face -face or you're face-to-face -face with friends that you may also bully me. Is that is online bully then related to also uh, in the physical world? They were able to start to understand their peer relationships and how the what happens um, online is just as significant in relational connection as what we would see many times face to face. So in the end, those youth workers, this isn't just about having a Facebook account, an Instagram account, a TikTok account. Uh, it's not just about having these accounts, but it's how we use it. How much are we revealing of ourselves too? How much are we actually being social or are we just being promoters? Uh, it's very easy to use it as a communication tool to just simply promote and inform. But actually, are we using it as a way to relate, which is the basis line for what young people are using it for? So youth workers, it's important that we, if we want to be relational, young people are redefining what it means to be relational. They want face-to-face, -face, but they want it to be a holistic, real-world experience where you're in both of these realms. We need to engage and enter into their world knowing full well that we do that with appropriate boundaries and we need our churches to understand that there needs to be the appropriate funding to be able to support youth workers and to have the, the data they need to have the tools they need permission and also the safe stops to be able to effectively engage uh, in the social media world now the second shift that we look at here uh, is that we to be relational is actually about becoming a missional youth ministry is actually understanding the relational shift that has happened. And you got to move from attractional ministry to sending. And what I mean by that uh, is that trust relationally comes on the, on the back end of, do you believe in me? This generation has shown us that they've redefined what it means to be relational. It used to be that you were in relationally right away, automatically assume that, hey, we can be in together until I have reason to not want to be relationally connected to you. And then you're out. We now begin with a place of you're out until I welcome you in. You're out until I friend you. You're out until I follow you. You're out until I want to have the conversation, accept you into, into my relational journey online and in day-to-day -day life. So with this whole idea, if they actually have the most relational trips with their peers uh, because they've already been welcomed in. So how do we then relational being redefined? If you have to build trust, Sometimes they have to say no to you or no to a youth worker or no to someone long enough to be able to actually know it's them saying yes to welcoming into that relationship, it, uh, welcoming into the permission to speak into and be part of their lives. When you begin to show that you actually trust them, you do student-based learning, allow them to discover their learning and look to you as a guide, as a stage, so it's someone to walk with them. It's about believing in them. When you are able to say, I want to see you thrive and give them opportunity, um, it's allowing them to go into their world and say, how do I resource you that I believe in you rather than me going to tell you what to do. I'm actually going to guide walk, and walk with you as you navigate life that I'm going to empower you to say, actually, I can't reach your friends like you can. It's not about bringing your friends to the paid Christian professional to meet Jesus, but rather, how do I equip and empower you who has the relational chips because relational is so key. You know, truth has really arrived. Truth doesn't change rooted in Christ and in Jesus. And yet how this generation arrives at truth is largely related in the influence of whoever has the greatest relational influence on my life also helps shape my truth. So their friends who have relational investment into them are people that are needing to walk with them most closely. So how do we equip students to be able to invest in their friends and to live out the message and hope and love of Jesus? So we want to empower students to what I say, it's their turn to breathe. Breathing takes two things. You want to inhale, you want to exhale. Part of being relational is helping them learn what it is to grow in Jesus, to take that in. To how do they own their own journey? It's not just being spoon fed, but it's walking with them and building that trust of, hey, I've got, you know, to share with them to help them. How do they own their own journey? And then the key part of relational thing is allowing them to breathe out, which is to live out their faith, to be empowered, uh, where it's not the programmatic element that you're trying to run for them, 
but rather saying we may have programmatic elements, but these are to help facilitate you to actually have a larger launching pad. And our race is, is how do we empower you to go? Not how do we get everybody in, but how do we train you to go out and make a difference because we believe in you. And that builds relational chips, trust that allows the bond to build on how we do discipleship really well. So friends, here we are. To be effective in ministry to our young people today, we need to be relational. We've always had to be relational. But being relational has now been redefined because of the significant influence of the digital and social media realm. And as we make the shifts to see that the real world is engagement in the digital world, the social media world, and the physical world, together, as we empower students and walk with them, believe in them, and trust them, we will have greater permission to be part of their discipleship journey. That is what part of being part of being relational well, being relational is being redefined. Well, thanks, Matt, for reminding us what it means to connect relationally uh, with our students, uh, both in terms of the digital realm as well as the physical realm, and that the fact is it's all real for, for all of us. And so hopefully uh, you were able to glean some insights. Uh, do check back on our webpage at cboq.ca slash book club uh, to get the follow-up questions. Also, we invite you to come back on Thursday, March the 11th at 7 p.m., uh, you can also find the link at our website again, cboq.ca slash book club for more details. In the meantime, blessings to you as you continue to extend the grace and the hope of Jesus to your students and beyond them.